tenemos que hablar del caso de Julian Assange. Y yo hay que... ya sabía. ¿Ah? Sí, entonces tengo un invitado buenísimo, te va a gustar. Híjole, pues yo también traigo uno buenísimo. No, pero el mío está mejor. No, pero el mío es una gente muy cercana a Assange. No, el mío es más cercano, seguro que es más cercano. Ah, ¿ya, ya llegó el mío? No, el mío es mejor, mira. Gabriel Shipton. John Shifton, Welcome. el padre de ah, Julian Assange. ¿Es el papá de Julian Assange? Y es el hermano de Julian Assange. Ay, bueno, pues tenemos que hablar de un asunto familiar. Entonces. Let me introduce your father. <risa> Tomen asiento, por favor. Bueno, pues es un placer tener aquí en el Chamuco TV al padre y al hermano de Julian Assange. Estamos convencidos de que Julian Assange es el periodista más importante de nuestros tiempos. Y estamos convencidos de que está sufriendo una persecución absolutamente grotesca y absurda. Yo le quisiera preguntar a John, ¿qué implica, qué implicaciones tiene la prisión y el, la persecución a Julian Assange? Well, it, it means for, uh, for Julian uh, unrelenting malice and vicious hatred and uh, 13 years of uh, unscrupulous lies and slander. That's for um, human rights, it means that the abrogation of the great civil artifacts that came into being in the late 20th century, the, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the Conventions of Asylum and uh, Due Process have all, in the case of Julian Assange, collapsed. Um, and he has uh, faced uh, now moving to the 13th year in uh, arbitrary detention. Now, I don't say these things. The United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention declared it so that Julian was arbitrarily detained. And I don't say that Julian has been psychologically tortured, although I believe it's to be true and evident. Uh, the United Nations Rapporteur on Torture makes that statement to the United Nations General Assembly, which is accepted by the General Assembly. Both of those instruments from the United Nations were ignored by the United Kingdom, by Sweden and by the United States. So, as you can see, we're in a dire circumstance of the collapse of the rule of law. Hay un movimiento, yo diría que mundial, eh, a favor, apoyando a Julian Assange y exigiendo que sea eh, sacado de la cárcel y, y que se regrese a Australia. Ustedes están, evidentemente, eh, en este movimiento y además ahora con un documental que se va a presentar en, en, en México por estos días y tú eres el productor, Gabriel, de este documental. Platícanos un poco de lo que cuenta esta, esta, esta película. Uh, well, the documentary is called Ithaca. Uh, it's a feature documentary. Uh, it's really um, about John and Stella's fight uh, to free Julian. Mm -hmm. So it's a humanistic um, telling of the story. Um, we started to uh, make it in 2019. Uh, I went to see Julian in the prison there, um, and he was, you know, I'd never seen him like that before. He was. Uh, being kept in what they call the health wing of the prison, which is, uh, the prisoners actually call it the hell wing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's where they keep the most suicidal, um, the terminally ill prisoners. And I left the prison that day thinking, uh, you know, that I might not see Julian again. So we started to think, how do we, um, you know, because Julian's been so dehumanized in the media, in, in, in Western media. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been turned, you know, Uh, into somebody who doesn't feed his cat or somebody who uh, is a bad house guest, all these sort of things that shouldn't really matter about Julian. But what we attempted and set out to do with Ithaca was to uh, humanize him again. You know, Julian is a human being and, and people, a lot of people, particularly in the West, uh, are able to forget that uh, conveniently, you know, and, and so his persecution um, becomes tolerable for a lot of people because they see him as a, you know, not as a human being, but as something who, mm -hmm. as somebody who, um, you know, has been totally demonized, dehumanized and mobbed in, in the media. Porque así como hay 
todo un movimiento mundial apoyando a Julian Assange, hay una campaña bastante fuerte para, para condenarlo, para eh, estigmatizarlo, para descalificar su trabajo, que es finalmente mm. lo importante en esto. ¿no? Eh, se ha dicho mucho que finalmente está en la cárcel por decir la verdad. ¿No es así? ¿John? Bueno, well, <laughs> you know, um, every single parliament in Europe has an Assange cross-party group in it. As in the case of Greece, which is very strong, there's 300 parliamentarians, 90 of them are in the Assange group. Um, in, in the Bundestag, in the German parliament, in the French parliament, in the uh, Norwegian parliament, even in the parliament of Luxembourg, there's cross-party group. In the United Kingdom parliament, in, in the Spanish parliament. Every single major head of state in uh, South America at one time or another has supported the freedom of Julian Assange. Um, the government in Australia was recently elected uh, about 100 days ago uh, on an Assange platform. So you can, get an, an, you, be, you can get into government if you say that we are going to go about bringing freedom to Julian Assange. This indicates the tremendous depth and strength that the people of the world feel about the uh, incarceration and intolerable show trial that Julian has had to undergo. Gabriel tocó un tema que es muy importante. Y es el hecho de que eh, esta campaña eh, mediática que busca deshumanizar a Julian Assange siempre es la antesala de algo más serio. Siempre es la antesala que permite eh, justamente la violación a los derechos humanos. ¿Cómo es posible que el país que se presenta a sí mismo como el gran defensor de los derechos humanos, como el gran defensor de la libertad de imprenta, ¿cómo es posible que este país sea precisamente el que persigue a Julian Assange? ¿Qué nos dice esto de la barbarie que impera hoy en el mundo? Yo creo que la persecución de Julian es um, is emblemática de esta descent into barbarity. Uh, that we're seeing, you know, John, as John said, these sort of great pillars of our society that, that, that came after, after World War II have all been destroyed in Julian's case. And in that way, Julian's persecution is almost uh, like another leak in that sense. It's um, exposing uh, the lengths that these corrupt parties, corrupt governments, um, governments who have been exposed for committing war crimes or torture, it exposes the lengths that they will go to to silence uh, the people who, who, who expose their crimes. So I think, you know, we're just seeing this, this collapse of, of this, you know, Julian's emblematic of this collapse, of this dissent. Um, and that's, I think that's why so many people are getting behind, getting behind him because, you know, we want our societies to be transparent. We want to know what our governments do. We want to know who we're voting for. Uh, we want to know what, what our governments do with our tax dollars. You know, the uh, foreign wars and things like that, people sending their kids to war. They want to know that they're um, not going f for some, for, for a lie. So I think that's why we're seeing all this support that John was talking about all around the world. Um, and it's growing and growing. You know, poll in Australia, poll after poll, you know, it's the last poll, 71% of people agreed with the statement that Julian should be brought home. Yeah, that's what, yeah. yeah, and then the next one, 88%. Now there's only 12% of people in Australia who disagree uh, that Julian should be brought home. And, and it's the same all over the world. You know, just recently, 90 German parliamentarians uh, voted to uh, make Julian an issue on all their committees. So now you have a German-American friendship committee in the German parliament who has Julian's freedom as part of their agenda. So now Germans are traveling to the US. They're there in Washington at the moment, German politicians, talking to their counterparts about Julian's freedom. And I think there's this worldwide movement, as you say, you know, and, and uh, what AMLO is doing as well is, is uh, incredible in the sense that it, 
shows that uh, the world has been reorganized as well. Um, and so the, the power centers are now moving and uh, people, uh, leaders are now able to say to the US, look, no, we don't agree. We, we can push back on that. And I think that's, you know, really, Julian's emblematic of that as well. Anthony Albanese, el primer ministro australiano, yes. eh, eh, dijo que enough is enough, que ya era suficiente. Mm. Pero real, eso lo dijo pues, públicamente, pero, pero ¿realmente está haciendo algo? Ustedes ya hablaron con él, ¿sí está realmente haciendo algo? ¿Creen en él? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm, yeah. um, okay. you know, uh, and that was during the election campaign, right? You know, politicians <laughs> during elections, they make all sorts of promises. Uh, and then, so after the election, he said, well, um, foreign policy or foreign policy is not done with a bullhorn or a loud hailer. So, you know, trying to say to the public, well, we're doing something, but we're doing it you know, behind closed doors. So. But don't worry, trust us, we're doing something. But I mean, I wish that, I, I wish that our government would follow um, AMLO's example, you know, just doing the negotiations behind closed doors, but also making public, you know, what you're doing, putting that pressure on. Uh, I think that's what's really needed. Um, uh, otherwise, Julian will never, you know, never be free uh, if, if we, you know, always trying to do something behind the scenes, but not, um, not using those other levers. I mean, the, our, our participation of, um, as Julian's family and the participation of parliamentarians worldwide and the participation of the Human Rights Council of Europe and the statements made by the Austrian government and the, the uh, Federation of Switzerland, Swiss government, all of these are tools that the uh, the Australian government can utilise to bring uh, pressure on the United States, well, on the Washington administration, because we did a tour of the United States, 16 cities, and we had tremendous support. So it's not the American people who are doing this, it's Washington, and it's a, a policy that comes from certain uh, institutions in in Washington. So we can assist the Australian government. AMLO assists the Australian government by courageously saying, well, we'll offer Assange asylum. He, come, he can make a home here mm -hmm. in Mexico. He can make Mexico City his home. And this gives courage to other prime ministers and parliamentarians. Uh, Lula, whenever he, he's in Europe at the same time as Gabriel and I are, he, his assessors ring up and say, a photo opportunity, come and see me. So he takes with his courage the burden of facing the United States and saying, no, this circumstance must end. And the, uh, and the end can be brought about by negotiation with say, for example, Lula or AMLO and the uh, Australian Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. It's simple. Muy bien, pues eh, vamos a hacer una pausa y regresamos inmediatamente porque esta conversación está realmente buenísima. No se vayan. Y seguimos aquí en Chamuco TV y estamos platicando ni más ni menos que con Gabriel Shipton, que es hermano de Julian Assange y productor del documental Ítaca, y con John Shipton, que es el padre de Julian Assange. Y bueno, yo quisiera señalar una cosa, es decir, Julian Assange eh, reveló cosas realmente muy importantes eh, a través de Wikileaks y entre otras cosas reveló eh, cosas centrales acerca del gobierno de México. Reveló cómo en tiempos de eh, Vicente Fox, cuando finalizaba el sexenio de Vicente Fox, del presidente Vicente Fox, Felipe Calderón fue a la embajada de Estados Unidos 
a plantear que se encontraba en una situación de extrema debilidad. Y Wikileaks documentó que este, la embajada de Estados Unidos hizo un equipo de la embajada que iba a trabajar con el equipo de Calderón en el relevo. En una de las cosas que se presume, o que, se, que suponemos o que resultan evidentes, es que una de las cosas que se pactó en esa reunión fue ni más ni menos que la guerra contra el narco. Quiero decir con esto que la aportación de Julian Assange a la vida política de México ha resultado absolutamente fundamental, ha resultado crucial y muy reveladora. Entiendo que esto también, este agradecimiento que le tiene el pueblo de México a Julian Assange se repite en otras partes del planeta. ¿No es así, John? Sí, yeah, yeah, yes. uh, the... <laughs> That's a principal reason why uh, Julian is pursued is not because of laws, it's because of uh, vindictiveness and fearfulness of those who've committed crimes. Um, the president of Bolivia once wittily remarked that there will never be uh, a coup in Washington because there's no U.S. embassy there. So we can understand, <laughs> we can understand. Uh, we got a, a real insight with the cables, with the 250,000 cables, into how the United States organizes its empire, the bribery, the blackmail, the corruption, the murder, that some of it... Uh, was put to use, to very good use in Mexico, and um, some was put to very good use by Rafael Correa in Ecuador. This was uh, amusing. So when Rafael became president, he read the cable, which uh, indicated that the United States Embassy was paying the wages of the elite police force in Ecuador. Okay. <laughs> So he's now president. He said, well, what will I do about this? This is a problem which will endanger my life and my government and my country. We can't have this. So what he did is he raised the wages of all the other policemen to the same level as the elite policemen. And this brought calm and order. So the, the cables in many instances were able to bring insight which gave good governance. Um, I can give other examples as we go along, you know. Uf. El presidente López Obrador, eh, AMLO, ustedes lo conocen como AMLO, es más fácil de pronunciar AMLO en inglés, <laughs> eh, declaró recientemente que, que iba a hablar con, con Joe Biden para tratar de convencerlo de, de pues, eh, no pedir la extradición y que si finalmente Estados Unidos lo hacía, pues no quedaba otra más que re que Estados Unidos regresara a la Estatua de la Libertad, a Francia, porque entonces ya no tendría ningún sentido ese símbolo. Eh, ¿Qué tan importante es un, un apoyo como el del presidente de México? Ya más nos lo comentaron, puede ser incluso como un ejemplo. Bueno, también John habló sobre Lula. ¿Cómo ven estos apoyos que, que, han, que han tenido, que son... No solo el apoyo de la gente es muy importante, pero también el apoyo de, de gobernantes. Yeah, I think you know it's um, you know supremely important to have to have that support, um, particularly in Mexico, who's one of you know a U.S. neighbor and you know one of the leaders, the, the, if not the leader of, of uh, Latin America. You know, you have, like John was saying, you have um, President López Obrador saying these things, and then you'll have you know the new president of Colombia. He comes out and says something about Julian. Then, you know, the new president of Chile coming out and saying something. So you form these uh, power blocks begin to form. And together, they're, they're stronger than they are just one voice. And so I think that's, that's really important. But it's, it's good to understand that um, this power, that, that this, this movement for Julian comes from the people. You know, it comes from... Uh, the goodwill of the people, and that's what we've seen in Australia, is that um, people who support Julian 
they enjoy success um, in in the elections, and you know I think we've seen that in in with other Latin American leaders who come out in support of Julian, um, that they then take the goodwill of the people that that support of the people for Julian, and they turn it into electoral success. So I think uh, that's an imp important element um, of it as well. But uh, you know this uh, you know. The, your president's voice echoes all around the world. You know, even in Australia, there's reporting on it. Uh, you know, in, in the U United States. I mean, recently he's had this great. Um, this is wonderful. You know, he was trolling Biden, right? <laughs> like he was. He said, you know, if, if you <laughs> don't drop the charges, you may as well pack up the Statue of Liberty See, mm -hmm. and, and send it back. You know, and I, I think, um, you know, that that sort of thing. It's algo muy simbólico. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, it's, um, that what what they're doing, you know, is is totally hypo it's total hypocrisy. You know, you've got um, even you know the Chinese foreign spokespeople, uh, foreign, post foreign spokespeople of um, the CCP coming out and saying, you know, who are you to lecture us on press freedom? You know, you've got a journalist in prison, a publisher in prison, probably the greatest publisher, you know, the most broken, the most stories ever. Um, you've locked him in in a prison, and so even even the Russians are, are using Julian against the UK. So everywhere around the world, um, people can see this hypocrisy, and they use it for their in their favour. Una cosa, John ha dicho públicamente que si cae Julian, caen pueden caer todos los demás periodistas. Yes, uh, the, uh, <laughs> if I could add to that, it's already happened. I can't imagine any publisher willing to, or journalist willing to publish something like the, the cables, there's 250,000 cables, the Iraq war logs, 400,000 of those proving that 15,000 uh, civilians were killed in the invasion. Uh, then there's the uh, 90,000 uh, Afghan war logs. I can't imagine any publisher or journalist contemplating publishing those qualities of material and stories and realising that they'll face 13 years of arbitrary detention, lies, slander, vicious hatred, malice, and then court case after court case. I try to keep con uh, track of the number of court cases, I think, it's 23 now, it'll be 24 next month. 24 wow. court cases. It's interminable. Now, after the 24, there'll be, if it goes against Julian, there'll be appeals. If Julian wins, the United States will appeal. So there'll be two more court cases next year, 25. It's infinite. Mm -hmm. We've spent, I, I guess, because I don't know, I imagine that worldwide we've spent probably 10 or 15 million dollars on Julian's defence. With Gabrielle raised uh, 54 million US on an NFT, which Gabrielle can explain to you um, some time ago. Uh, just to, to, it's a gauge of support. Isn't it? The, the other day in a speech, uh, a, senior parliament, a senior politician made the observation that in the West, the governments are getting further and further from the people. Well, of course, you know what this means. You eventually have riots in the street and so on. So this is, in the circumstance of Julian Assange, the support is worldwide. It's there are a thousand or so parliamentarians supporting. Parliamentarians listen to the constituents and bring the what the concerns of the constituents into publish into the public. We look at the concerns and reinforce and give our energies to those parliamentarians. And in the case of Australia, we give those parliamentarians government. It's really strong. So the, um, you know, the evasion of the understanding 
of Washington that this is bringing no good to Washington whatsoever. It's a mess, a complete mess worldwide. It just uh, reduces the stature of the United States uh, and its administration to the point where AMLO can troll. It can say, well, you know, you, you're doing all right here. You better send that statue back because you don't deserve it. There's no liberty over there. Or the, as Gabriel mentioned, the uh, foreign affairs spokesperson for the Chinese government says, look, you people are locking up journalists. Uh, the, the science, look at him, isn't there? It's now 13 years you've locked him up for. Another uh, president, Azerbaijan, uh, when questioned by the BBC, replies, you have destroyed physically and morally a journalist in your jails in London and you come over here and accuse me of treating journalists poorly. I mean, the stat that you need in, in order to negotiate with your partners in the world, you need dignity, stature, and some, so, some uh, uh, element of truth. You know, they've lost it. Mm. Seguimos en Chamuco TV, ahora en YouTube, y estamos con una conversación realmente buenísima con... John Shipton y Gabriel Shipton, padre y hermano de Juliana Sánchez, que están en México, están, eh, entre otras cosas, presentando un documental sobre, eh, sobre Juliana Sánchez llamado Ítaca. Eh, y estamos hablando sobre todo el apoyo que han tenido en todo el mundo, eh, que es muy importante y hablamos de la importancia que es que la gente, que el pueblo realmente eh, esté apoyando eh, la, la causa, la causa de la verdad, la causa de, de Juliana Sánchez. Pero también es importante algunos apoyos que han tenido de gente eh, pues más notable. Hemos hablado de, de, de algunos eh, gobernantes, pero, pero también hay otros personajes como Roger Waters, el fundador de Pink Floyd, el bajista de Pink Floyd, que se ha adherido a la causa totalmente. Y él comentó hace poco tiempo que si, que si Juliana Sánchez está en la cárcel por haber difundido el video que le dio este uh -huh. Chelsea Manning, uh -huh pues Roger Waters también debería estar en la cárcel porque él todas las noches en todos sus conciertos proyectaba ese video es durante toda su gira desde 2010 a 2013. Eh, ¿Qué tan importante es también este tipo de apoyos que, que han estado teniendo? Sí, yeah, I mean, hugely, hugely important. Right? Roger Waters, I just did a 30-city tour, or I think he's still going, goes to October, um, a 30-city tour around the U.S., And every night, uh, every city he's in, he has a huge section devoted to Julian. You know, he has, um, you know, sections of uh, collateral murder video, you know, that the famous WikiLeaks release uh, that shows journalists being gunned down by the helicopter gunship in Iraq. Mm -hmm. uh, he has, you know, free Julian. I think he's even, <laughs> uh, pardon my language, but he's like, you know, fuck the, fuck the warmongers, like things like that uh, in his show. And... Uh, I think that's a really uh, important level. Ahorita te decimos cómo se dice en español para que lo digas en español. Uh, <laughs> it's a little sad time. Uh, um, and I, I think it's very important to note that even in the U.S., um, it's not a blob there. You know, there's a lot of support for Julian there. Uh, civil society in the U.S., you know, the largest uh, human rights organizations, the largest press freedom organizations, have written three letters now to the Biden administration. Uh, each time saying, you know, this prosecution uh, that, that you're doing, that you're continuing on with, is a threat uh, to journalists. And we're talking about, you know, ACLU, uh, Human Rights Watch, Amnesty International, all the biggest ones. I mean, some of them, you know, are even involved in uh, some of the foreign policy messes of the United States, but they're still coming out and saying this, uh, that writing letters to Biden saying this is a threat. Uh, also, uh, recently, you've, you've had executive editors of New York Times, Washington Post doing editorials saying, you know, this prosecution of Julian Assange is a threat to us, is a threat to our rights as publishers. Um, so it's, there's even in US society, civil society, even in the corporate media, there's this recognition that uh, what's going on 
you know, is extremely dangerous for them in their country and their First Amendment. Mm, hay una frase muy usada, muy manida, que afirma que la verdad nos hará libres. ¿Cómo es posible que Julian Assange esté en la cárcel por decir la verdad? ¿Qué, de qué, qué, qué nos dice esto de la sociedad? ¿Qué tan autoritario es el régimen y qué tan hipócrita es el régimen que encarcela al periodista más importante de nuestros tiempos? <laughs> well, you know, it's grotesque <laughs> that an innocent man sits in jail and Brown University releases a paper, a study of the creation of refugees over the last 20 years, 36 million refugees created by the actions of Washington in the destruction of seven and a half countries. Seven and a half countries destroyed. Gideon Polya, who is a professor at Melbourne University, does studies on excess deaths. Six million people have died directly over the last 20 years in the United States wars in the Middle East. There must be hanging over the Middle East a pall of grief, thundercloud thick. It's shocking that the person who just published those is held in in Belmarsh Prison. It's shocking and astonishing. And that has motivated people around the world to join us and many others, AMLO, in insisting, it's not a request, we insist that Julian Assange be freed and sent home to his family. There can, the flux of life will not permit this endless murderous slaughter that the Washington administration embarked upon. It, life can't permit it. And so everywhere you see people, presidents, parliamentarians, groups of people standing on street corners just with a placard saying free Assange. Every street corner, in Germany, once a fortnight, 19 cities. In Australia, every city once a week has an event, and so on around the world. We are here at the invitation of the government of Mexico and the president of Mexico, who, as Gabriel pointed out, is a neighbour of the, of a vengeful Washington government. And yet, he says, Assange must be free. And the same right throughout South America. In South America, we estimate, I guess, there's uh, between Portuguese speakers and Spanish speakers, around 500 million people. The support for Julian, even though we don't work here, in South America or Mesoamerica because we don't have the language. Nobody's been here encouraging support and yet the support is rock solid over 13 years. Rock solid. They're unwavering in their support because they, I imagine, that the experience of oppression and of governments plundering their people at the behest of the United States, Guatemala, for example. The experience has driven into the souls of the South American and Mesoamerican people a profound understanding that those who give to you and give truth to you are treasures and you must fight for them. But those who don't, you must resist. And so it is that this we see is now the second pink tide rolling over South America. Again, 
the United States oppressed the last one, destroyed Ecuador, Bolivia, uh, Peru, and so on, uh, Argentina, uh, Brazil. But how long did it last? Not long. And the pink tide flows again. And it's stronger this time because it has a leader in Mexico. And it'll have an equally powerful leader in Lula in Brazil. In, uh, Brazil. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sí, yo creo que se entiende ese apoyo de, de, de Latinoamérica, de la gente de Latinoamérica, perfectamente, porque es muchísimos millones de personas que quieren la verdad. Que quieren la verdad sobre el imperio. Sobre el, es, sí, sobre el imperio, porque es muy claro que Juliana Sánchez está preso por revelar verdades muy incómodas al imperio. Sí. No solo verdades, revelar crímenes de guerra. Así es. Y se va a sentar un precedente muy importante, sea cual sea el resultado, de un lado o de otro, en un sentido o en otro. Si, fin si finalmente a Sánchez liberado va a ser un presidente buenísimo para la libertad de expresión, Así para es. el periodismo, para la libertad de y para la verdad. Pero si sucede lo contrario, va a ser un precedente terrible. Sí, claro. ¿Qué tan optimistas o pesimistas están ustedes frente a, frente a estas posibilidades? Oh, in both the circumstances that you made then, I'm uh, um, firm in my belief that we will resolve both. That if, Julian, if Julian's oppression results in his permanent disability, then this will strengthen and put iron in the souls of all the people who understand this circumstance. If Julian is free, then we will have a moment of joy in our souls. But in both circumstances, the flux of life will insist that Julian be celebrated. So that incluso al mismo imperio estadounidense le conviene liberarlo. Sí, le convendría liberarlo. Y aquí hay, una, hay un tema que es delicado y que tiene que ver con el caso de Ecuador. Rafael Correa le dio asilo a Julian Assange, después cambia a Rafael Correa, sale Rafael Correa, queda Lenín Moreno, aparecen los Panama Papers y el sucesor de Rafael Correa, Lenín Moreno, le quita el asilo a Julian Assange. ¿Qué piensan ustedes? de Lenín Moreno. Bueno, well, you know, he's a you know despicable character. I think you know um, he betrayed uh, he you know he betrayed everybody basically. Um, sold out to the uh, to have better relations with the U.S. government who. Uh, you know, Washington has, you know, ripped the soul out of that country for years and years, and now they just turn around and mm -hmm. say, okay, well, let's do it all again. Um, and, you know, what they did to Julian, obviously, is uh, absolutely, you know, they sold, basically sold Julian for an IMF loan. Mm -hmm. um, it's totally um, despicable behaviour uh, from Lenin uh, Moreno. I mean, it's... I don't, I don't really have words to describe how I feel about that. Um, you know, when when the government changed, it was Julian was in the Ecuadorian embassy, and it turned from his sanctuary into his cage, and eventually his torture chamber. So, and that was all happening under Lenin Moreno. Uh, you see, Global, the security firm that was meant to be protecting Julian. Uh, they became an asset of the CIA. And so there were cameras, high definition cameras installed everywhere inside the embassy. Uh, there were microphones installed in, in the ladies' bathroom, in mm -hmm. the meeting rooms. Um, there were plots. We found out there was, uh, last September, there was a report uh, from these journalists in Washington, and they had a confirmation from 30 intelligence community sources from current and from the Trump administration, that within the CIA, that there were plots to kill Julian, and plots to kidnap him. And it was using this company, uh, this 
security company. Um, and there's a current, there's a, uh, an ongoing investigation in Spain uh, investigating the security company. There were leakers there, and there's uh, emails that say that they had plotted to poison Julian. So these orders from the CIA mm -hmm. made it to this security company. And this is another area where that shows how, um, you know, this case is entirely political. There's mm -hmm. nothing legal about it at Cheater. all. Is that the meetings with Julian's lawyers in the in Ecuadorian embassy were all recorded and given to the people uh, back in the US, given to the CIA <laughs> in the US. Uh, all his legal documents when he was taken from the embassy, they went back to Quito and they were given to the FBI. So in what in what uh, proper uh, legal case does your opposition have all your legal documents? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do they have all the meetings with your lawyers, uh, with your doctors? Uh, and this is all public knowledge now. And so it just uh, it shows that what's happening to Julian is entirely a political persecution. Uh, there is nothing legal about it. And governments in Australia, you know, governments in the UK say, oh, well, these legal proceedings you know, we have to rely, we, we, we can't um, interfere in the legal process, whereas uh, the United States has continually interfered in, 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 in Julian's rights uh, to, a, to a fair legal process. No solo es un asunto político, es claro que, lo, que todo lo que hagan lo hacen de manera inmoral, con trampas. Sí. ¿Eh? Eh, hay un, existe un sitio eh, en internet donde se puede ver el documental, tengo entendido que se puede eh, registrar para hacer proyecciones, eh, se registra uno como huésped y se pueden hacer proyecciones con la gente, reunir un cierto grupo sí. de gente. ¿Cómo es más o menos el proceso? Me gustaría que nos platicaran para que la gente pues lo haga y pueda difundirse mucho oh, más yes, el so, documental. Um, Ithaca.movie. Ithaca. Yeah, Ithaca.movie is Ithaca. the website. Ithaca.movie, sí. Yes, is the website. Um, you can go on onto the website. We have a, a form there where people can fill in. Uh, if you want to host a screening of the mm -hmm. documentary, um, you know, we also uh, support the screenings. You know, we're always asking, you know, what, you know, at the end we always want people to do something. You know, what can people do? You know, whether it's, um, you know, writing to their politician or, or, or you know, writing to Merrick Garland, who's the DOJ in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, things like that, or, or, or joining local groups uh, who protest for Julian. So uh, it's all about. Uh, encouraging that action, that, that movement, and growing the movement, educating people, maybe bring a friend who you know, doesn't know so much about the case, uh, and, and you can, they might not come to a protest or a talk, but they would come to see a documentary. Um, and it's a very uh, mm -hmm. accessible documentary. We, we made it not for, for everybody, really. If there's something there for people who know a lot about Julian, but also people who know nothing. So. Uh, is the is the Spanish subtitle? For? Yes. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. I'd just like to add, you know, the, just one thing about uh, um, the ex-president of Ecuador. Um, he brought upon himself a burden of disgrace and ridicule, because after he had sold Julian the relevant minister who was looking after the matter on behalf of the UK government went to the <laughs> went to the Buckingham Palace gift shop and brought a nice gift plate and flew to Quito and gave that gift plate that from the Buckingham Palace gift shop to the president of Ecuador in appreciation of him, well, doing this. Suspending due process for removing the conventions of asylum the, that Julian was under, for without due process, rescinding Julian's Ecuadorian citizenship as a, an executive decision uh, it was hard to imagine Julian had done anything offensive uh, because he was in the embassy all the while. And now the ex-president of uh, Ecuador, oh, and 
as he was being, as his stature in Ecuador uh, was reducing from his actions, there were riots in the street, so people were killed and corpses were left in the street. Um, people forget these things that this ha because it happened during COVID. You think it was COVID. And now he, he brought that burden to the people of the country he was looking after, ruined the country's reputation, ruined the administration of the country's reputation and brought disgrace upon himself. And now he's in exile, I believe, in Uruguay, living in the hills somewhere there. So this just illustrates to you how you can take, a, say, the Secretary of State uh, of the United States who brought about this persecution of Julian Assange. A, uh, lost, he lost uh, 700 pounds and he's running around the place trying to become the uh, President of the United States. Of course he has no chance, he's uh, no longer a significant figure. Okay. And so it, uh, I think you, you might want to call it the curse of Assange, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> it exists. Sí, para mí lo, yo lo que veo es que el debate sobre la estatua de la libertad y la figura de Julian Assange es un debate perfectamente pertinente, uh -huh. porque yo sí creo que ahora el símbolo de la lucha por la libertad es un símbolo vivo, y es precisamente Julian Assange. Es el caso de Julian mm. Assange. Mm. Well, it's the, it's the press freedom fight of our lifetime. Así es. Like, um, there's a scene in Ithaca where John says, there will never be... Uh, another journalist, another publisher no. who will have this kind of support worldwide in this fight. When are we going to have another chance like this to fight for these rights for everybody around the world? There won't be another chance. So this is the fight of our lifetime. To, to fight and free Julian is um, something that I think we all have to do. Yeah. Pues muy bien. Pues queremos agradecerles el que hayan estado con nosotros. Eh, nos queda clarísimo que es, que es un, lo que significa este movimiento, lo que significa Julian Assange, lo que significa para el mundo y, y especialmente para Latinoamérica. Nos sentimos muy, muy cercanos a esta lucha porque ha sido una lucha de décadas y décadas y sabemos que estamos en un punto bien importante. Mm. Muchísimas gracias, Gabriel. Muchísimas gracias, John. No sé si... Thank bueno, you. Hacemos Thank nuestra... La, exigencia de liberación de Julian Assange y este pues vamos a pedir la libertad para Assange pues sí y los invitamos a todos a que eh, entren a itaca.com se registren y se organicen para poder tener exhibiciones de este, de este documental y difundirlo entre más gente lo vea mucho mejor va a seguir creciendo este movimiento que de por sí ya es un movimiento mundial muy, muy importante. Okay. Free Assange, yeah. viva México. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> muy bien, pues muchísimas gracias a todos ustedes. Nos vemos en la próxima. No dejen de compartir este programa que estuvo realmente muy, muy interesante. Muchísimas gracias. Pues libertad para Juliana Assange. Libertad para Juliana Assange.